Swinging into today's video, we're gonna be having a look at the new Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. This is Spider-Gwen. A bite from a radioactive spider turns Gwen Stacy into the web slinger hero known as Spider-Gwen. For your information, we're going to go ahead and take the Ultra Megatron and put it to the very top of Gwen Stacy, or Spider-Gwen's head. She's going to be a little bit smaller than some of the other figures. Don't worry, I'll do a comparison. But the figure stands, according to the Megatron, 5.7 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 14.5 centimeters tall. Size comparisons? You got your size comparisons. There is Spider-Man, also from the same Into the Spider-Verse line. The star of the film, Miles Morales. Try to pick yourself up here, Spider-Gwen. Put her right back there where we started. She is, does have a difficulty of standing. I'll talk a little bit more about that after we do our size comparisons. If we can eventually get around to our size comparisons. There we go. We're not, we're not done yet. There's Prowler. There we go. And uh, last but certainly not least, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, is the Scorpion. And providing that all of these will stand in place, there, so far, are most of the Into the Spider-Verse figures that uh, we've already had a look at. Omitted here, of course, are Spider-Ham and... Uh, Oh, and also uh, Penny Parker, which we've also looked at on this channel. For her accessories, let's bring the camera back in. She does come with a web shooter. Kind of actually looks like it's a scarf. It's a scarf made out of marshmallow. Boy, do you not ever have the ability to paint such spectacular pictures. Thank you. But it does kind of look... It doesn't look quite like web shooting as it does more so kind of look like... It even kind of looks like a, a sheet of toilet paper that is just kind of flowing in the wind. It doesn't quite even match the same coloring as her. It actually looks a little bit more like a cream color, where when you put it against the figure, she's a little bit more of a chalky white. Either way, in whatever descriptions I would want to use for it, it just clamps right underneath there, and uh, she's instantly got a little web shooter. A uh, little small detail that I like is that they put, it looks like a little control console there, little buttons and stuff on the side. Something that you almost to the naked eye wouldn't even be able to see. That's actually a little bit more like webbing than it is anything else. So that's her accessories. Not really a whole lot to write home about if you would ever write home about an action figure accessory. I don't think this would necessarily be the one. As for the figure itself, it's not terrible. It's sort of relegated to the same problems as a lot of these, uh, you know, kid toys, is the fact that they're sort of really limited when it comes to leg articulation. As a result, also, I do have a problem where Gwen Stacy doesn't stand properly, and I ask myself, really, why? For all intensive purposes, the feet are really flat. She does have peg holes, I guess you could make use of a stand if you wanted to. But I guess it's maybe just the posture of her. Maybe it's also the fact that her head is a little bit bigger, but I do find her a little bit more of a trickier figure to stand. There you go. It would, have, it would not have worked if I had just said that and she would have stood completely upright. So we kind of overlook the fact that the figure doesn't stand well. How does she look as a figure? Well, not terribly, actually. All the nuances, all the things that are painted on Gwen Stacy carries over here to this figure as well. Except for, I guess, maybe the turquoise sort of blue uh, spider webbing that would normally be in her pink, uh, the pink part of her costume. Here you can see it's been sculpted as the webbing, and they've put the pink in there, but there's no additional paint on top of that. I know I'm asking a whole lot. Primarily, most of her outfit is really just white and black and pink. And, of course, we cannot forget pink and a little bit of blue, I guess, if you want to add that to the mix as well. This normally would have been, like I said, up here as well, but it only really gets left and 
it, it's basically left at the door by her feet, by her shoes. Paint's a little on the messy side. You have to kind of overlook that. Look from a distance and squint, if you will. Uh, but the blue is a little on the sloppy side. Also, one of the all other problems, too, is like the legs appear like they were cast in black plastic. The top torso, however, looks like it was done in white plastic. You can probably see where this is going. That black in the leg is pretty clean because there's really no paint. It's just the the blue in, that's been painted over top. Everything else is plastic. Here, however, because they've added the black, it's never really a straight cut line. It always looks like it's never finished. It looks like that they, they probably, as the figures are going through, there's a like a template that likely goes over top of the mold and then the paint goes over top of it. If you've ever really painted a wall and you've put scotch or masking tape down, like a paint mat masking tape, and you peel it off, sometimes you don't see a really sharp line. Sometimes you have to even go back and finish it off. That's sort of what I'm getting right here. Looks like the tape has been removed and it sort of has left these unfinished lines. I guess you could probably go in there with a marker if you're really dedicated about making this figure a little bit more perfect than probably what it is. One of the hands is pretty sculpted. I mean, it goes without saying that all Spider-Man figures to some extent are gonna have this web shooting hand. Spider-Gwen clearly has that as well. The other gripping hand doesn't do anything because she doesn't have any other accessories. I guess in theory, you could put the webbing on this side, but I think for this hand to be shooting the web at any size, it probably makes more sense to have it on this side. Let's have a look at her head sculpt. I'm actually surprised that her hood comes off. And not only does it come off, but it's fully finished. Does, however, look very alien-like. This doesn't help an Abe, uh, it doesn't help at all either that the head is white, making it look even more alien-esque than perhaps, say, Miles Morales. Miles Morales also had a very similar problem with a very, very big egg-shaped alien head. I think it's even worse here on Spider-Gwen. Luckily, though, I mean, you're, you're gonna likely probably display her anyways with the hood over her. I just like for the fact that the hood is removable. Um, the eyes and overall paint here is pretty clean, but really there's not a lot that needed to be done. In fact, it actually looks like the white's been painted on her eyes instead of just outlining it in pink. At least it's finished to the credit of the eyes, which is something that I wish the lower half could have also had the same thing, you know, the same solution. Okay, so let's go through her posability. Now her head rotates all the way around. Luckily, her hood, being that it's sort of a separate piece, you can see how it's, it sits on top of her head. This means that you can rotate her head quite freely and there's no hood getting in the way of things. Um, the head doesn't really move up and down though. It doesn't really have an, a rocker back and forth, but instead you can just kind of rotate the head all the way around. The arms hinge out. Uh, you can rotate the arms around, both arms actually as well. Somebody had asked me, how come you only generally show articulation on one arm? Well, usually if it's unlike it's, say for example, if it's a McFarlane figure where the sculpting and the articulation will vary from one arm to the, ar the other arm, if it usually is the exact same on both sides, I usually only just show you the one side. But for anyone that was wondering, both the arms hinge out, both the arms rotate around, rotate around and both elbows bend whoops bend bend there we go and they also can rotate back and forth now you can probably see one thing that's also a problem with this particular figure her hand is lined perfectly that when you bend the arm this way up the arm the hand is still facing the right direction for some reason when they sculpted the hand I guess they want they sculpted it in a way that it would be bending inward. I, being, I guess, if you want to bend the elbow this way, yeah, I guess that I guess that makes some sense. So the arms do rotate all the way around, all the way around. There you go. There you go. I hope that has fulfilled somebody's request. You do sh both arms. There you go. Uh, the legs hinge back, back to about there, about there, and they also hinge forward. Not that you could really necessarily get her in any sort of creative poses. Believe you me, I've tried. 
And short of just giving her a display stand, which the figure really doesn't come with anyways, there's really nothing you can do with the figure other than what she is currently doing right now. Okay, well, you can rotate the arms and hinge those out. We've looked at that. But from the lower half down, it's not really a whole lot that you can do with the popularity of Spider-Gwen. It would, have, of course, make sense that she would appear in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse and also subsequently released from the folks over at Hasbro. This figure is pretty good. I mean, it sort of falls within the same parameters as all the other Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse figures. So you sort of go in with that expectation. This figure wouldn't disappoint. If you go in, however, with the illusions that this figure should have similar posability to a Marvel Legends, unfortunately, you're going to be pretty disappointed, Jack. Yes, because this is catered towards a kid's line, and more specifically for kids picking him up, a lot of these figures are really relegated to little to no pros posability from basically the waist down. They tease you with the top half being about the same level of posability as a Marvel Legends, but then the lower half is really where it lets you down. The head sculpt is pretty good if sort of not looking for, sort of looks a little bit like an alien head. Miles Morales had the same problem, but I think it looks worse on Gwen Stacy. Luckily, Spider-Gwen has the option of having the hood always on her head, but I like the fact that you can also lower the hood too, if you want that as your desired look. Yeah, overall, it's not a bad looking figure. And going into reviews like this, I have to sort of brace myself well, well in advance to discuss a figure that I know is geared towards kids. I certainly don't have the expectation level for this figure to be a resounding, super poseable, super awesome Spider-Gwen, but for what she needs to be and cater towards a kid's market, the Spider-Gwen isn't all that bad. I just wish she would be able to stand a little bit better. Today we were having a look at the Hasbro Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and this was Spider-Gwen. A figure I actually was going to look at a few weeks ago, and I just didn't get a chance to do so. We're having a look at her right now. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse figure reviews, though, would you believe there's a playlist for you? Yes, there is. And there's also a playlist for just Spider-Man. If Spider-Man is your thing, after all. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly also more videos will be coming your way soon to this channel. Probably as quickly as you finish watching this video, there'll be a new video right around the corner that you'll be able to check out. Always going to have new content coming onto this channel for 2019, but the key is making sure you hit that little subscribe button and making sure you hit the bell notification. Unless 2019, YouTube flips everything on its head again and decides to change out the format, and maybe this year you'll have to hit the teddy bear icon. I joke, but maybe it will be a teddy bear icon. Either way, guys, more videos will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.